everybody very much for tuning in to Real Solutions with Anna Aquino, and I am beyond excited to have Apostle Keenan Bridges, who is one of my, who I deem Christian super rock stars, preaching of the gospel, mighty man of God. So thank you so much for coming, Apostle. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely, because God's kingdom is exciting. Yes, it is. Um, So I am just so uber excited. Why don't you tell my uh, viewers a little bit about yourself and how God got you to where you are right now? Well, just a quick synopsis. I was um, born again at the tail end of the prophetic slash, well, I would say prophetic movement, word of faith movement. Um, in, I would say around 1996 is when I really got serious about the Lord. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of my favorite preachers at the time was a guy named John Osteen. Amen. Going on to be with the Lord now. His son, Joel Osteen, has taken over Lakewood Church, uh, in Houston. But I used to watch his programs and really he had a huge impact, you know, when I first got born again. And uh, it was through his television ministry that I accepted, you know, the call to salvation many, many years back. And then in the 90s, I got serious about the Lord. But anyway, fast forward, my father was a fisherman, and he thought he was Roland Martin. You probably don't know who Roland Martin is. I have no idea who that is. (laughs) He was a famous uh, fisherman, bass fisherman back in the day. Okay. And my dad would go fishing. He loved coming to Florida. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. But he loved coming to Florida because you guys had saltwater fishing <laughs> here. And um, even though I know you're not originally from Florida, are you? Uh, no, I lived there for 13 and a half years. Okay. And God has since moved my husband and I to Ohio. It's a really long story. So I'm in Ohio now. Okay, okay. But you, you have some Floridian in your blood. Yes, yeah, just a little. You, you, can, you can claim <laughs> that. So on one of the trips back from Pensacola, I heard the audible call to ministry. Amen. The Lord told me to preach his word. Didn't know what that meant. And so I just figured, you know, okay, I'll just keep living my life. And and all my mentors around me, because at that time, I didn't have a lot of mentors in the supernatural. So it was kind of like when you were a young believer, you weren't encouraged to really wander off into the deep, so to speak. I understand that. And so uh, they just say, hey, you know, just just pray about it, and and maybe God wants you to just preach in, in whatever sphere of influence that you're in. So if it, if it's the marketplace, right. then that's what God's called you. So I I just knew that I was going to be a businessman, and so that's what I sought out to do. I went to school and I studied computer science, and then switched my major to business. I started my first business when I was a junior in 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 college, and I was just on my way. Of course, those businesses didn't do what I thought they would do, and uh, the Lord began to deal with me, and he called me. I don't want to say called me again, because God only has to speak one time. Amen. The Bible says, the Lord has spoken twice, have we heard him? (laughs) And so there's an echo in the spirit. (laughs) The echo came and resonated and said, knock, knock, who's there? Amen. Holy Ghost. (laughs) the Holy Spirit arrested my heart. This is a long story, but it really began to unfold the call to ministry. I remember for several months, the Lord would wake me up at 3 a.m. in the morning. At the time, I'm married. Fast forward, my wife and I living in, in the, living in like um, a two-bedroom apartment in Tampa, and the Holy Spirit would wake me up every night and literally, through a supernatural experience, would reveal to me the plan and purpose that He called us to, which was to really bring the body of Christ to a place of wholeness through the teaching of the kingdom of God with signs and wonders following. And so healing, deliverance, all that kind of stuff, the prophetic was born out of that. And so here I am. And then the Lord called me the apostolic ministry, which I had no clue of that. (laughs) I thought an apostle was somebody that wore white suits. and wore. (laughs) So I definitely didn't want that. So I, I really ran from that until... Someone who was a very trusted prophetic voice in my life confirmed the apostolic, not just one person, several people, several trusted prophetic voices confirmed the apostolic call on my life. And I don't have to go by the term apostle, but I definitely function in an apostolic dimension. 
And, uh, you know, among many things the Lord has called and, and anointed my wife and I to do is to really resource the body of Christ. So the Lord has graced me to be able to write books Amen. that are really tools to help equip believers to function in their callings and ultimately fulfill their destiny. So that's the short of it. Amen. I think that I've said this a lot. You know, it's very similar. God called me young and I didn't know what to do with myself, you know, and right. I, I have a very similar, it was like, I put it on the back burner and, and God recalled me, if you want to say, you know, knocked on the door again. And I think that so many people out there, this is one of my plans for this, this outlet is mm -hmm. that they've got so many things that God is calling them to do and they're wrestling with the Holy ghost yeah. they're saying, but I'm one person and right. I can't do that. And you, know, right. you said, God called me an apostle, but I don't know what that even is. You right. know, how many times have we all heard, if we can do it, is it really God calling us? Because God needs to do it through us. Right. And that's so beautiful because it's like, God, you've got to do this. You know, right. this is this is on you, Net Eddie. Right. You know, and so that is just awesome. I yeah. was watching some video with you, um, the first Sid Ross show you were on, and you were talking about that book, and we'll get to the, your new book here in a minute, but you're talking about the healing book, and I just want to say you were moving me to passion for God, because it was, you know, we've all been through healing, you know, dealing with things that, you know, residual circumstances that need to go, and it was such an anointed word from God that I was sitting there, go you, go you, that's awesome, and I was sitting there moved to tears at yeah. the goodness of God and what he has brought you and your wife through. Could you yeah. just like that for like five minutes? You know what you were, you thought you had MS, your wife was diabetic. Your, I mean, it was just all these different things and God supernaturally restored your body. That's awesome. He did. And uh, the thing about it is I, I grew up around a lot of sickness and I often tell people that oftentimes your greatest annoyance is your greatest anointing. Amen. And so the enemy attacked my mother before I was born with sickness. My father was diagnosed with cancer. My siblings and other family members were struggling with all kinds of illnesses. And so you would think that my lot in life would be to accept that as my portion. But God had other plans. That's right. And um, it was healing, quote unquote, and I, I don't even really like the term healing ministry, but but just, you know, for most of our listeners, healing ministry is something that has always been at the core, the ethos of what God has called us to do. Now, that's what we were known for. We had a healing, and we still have one, but we started a healing school in Tampa, and uh, people came from all over the place to get healed. We've seen almost every physical condition healed. That's awesome. Um and it has to do with the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. You know, when you recognize that healing is part and parcel with your salvific experience. Amen. Then it changes the way you view sickness. You realize that it's not a separate work. It, it was part of the package. You know, if you sign up for, for Verizon and you're paying that huge premium, then you also get all of the the channels that come with it. That's right. The premium channels. And so we got the premium package through the cross. Amen. Jesus paid the premium of his blood, shed for us according to 1 Peter 2.24, so that we could walk in the covenant of not only healing, but divine health. And so, um, you know, I talk about the experience with me, and actually it was a, a relative that called me and told me that they were diagnosed with MS, and immediately when I received the phone call, I started to manifest the same symptoms. In fact, this is one of the reasons why I know beyond the shadow of doubt that many of these diseases, including MS and cancer, are spirits. And so uh, that spirit attached itself to me and my face went numb for days, if not weeks. Mm -hmm. My legs went numb. My, uh, there's a condition called Bell's palsy where you can't feel the left side of your face, almost like a stroke. Um, my eyes were, were uncontrollably twitching for weeks. I mean, it went on even tell my wife about it because I didn't want to 
bring her into fear. And so I couldn't even feel my feet or my legs mm -hmm. and would lose balance. I mean, all of them, those are classic symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And so I knew what was happening. And I said, God, heal me. Could you please heal me? And uh, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, so why are you asking me to do something I already did? Today? Amen. So, and I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, uh, uh, appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. You need to speak to your body. You need to declare that you're already healed. So that's what I, I started doing. He said, and this, in fact, this is exact verbiage the Lord gave me. He said, thank me for your healing. Amen. And so I started to thank him. And the more I thanked them, guess what happened? Nothing. All the symptoms. <laughs> Nothing. 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 <laughs> I continue to thank them. Amen. Everything began to shed. Amen. One of the symptoms began to shed off of my body. The same with my wife, who was diagnosed with diabetes. And uh, during, this was when our, uh, she got the diagnosis during her first pregnancy. And I remember, um, uh, you know, being very, her being very upset about it. And uh, we took communion one day and just released mm -hmm. our faith. Very simple. Mm -hmm. There were no lights. There was no camera, no action. There was action, but no camera. <laughs> and um, through, the, uh, through the finished work, as symbolized in the communion, the body and blood of Christ, my wife received the healing, went back to the doctor. They said, there's no diabetes you they gave her a clean bill of health Amen. completely and it all has to do with the supernatural power that's of right but of jesus christ so we we teach this and we i mean we get hard cases if you want to call them that from all over the place you know a lot of ministers shy away from this you know they they, they prefer to be comfortable but there's nothing about our calling that's comfortable come on now in fact you can't be a comfortable christian uh, it, it's not, it, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> if you think about being a believer in Jesus, Jesus always created discomfort. That's right. He always, he always messed with the status quo. He was countercultural, counter religious. Uh, and he always called people into a higher revelation. Amen. Mention of what the kingdom was. And so that's what we do all over the place. I travel the world ministering, seeing people heal, miracles. Amen. That's the regular part. People ask me sometimes, they say, do you have a healing service? I said, yeah, Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, service. Every, every meeting is a healing meeting. Why? That's because right. the healer is present. That's right. That's and right. That's kind of That's right. how that goes. And I wrote a book, Possessing Your Healing, to that end, which really changed a lot of lives and was a best-selling book and uh it, it was really just a blessing amen yeah. so i love this new book that you have come, that is it is out now right yes awesome i was i was saying joking to myself i love saying the name of it it sounds like an old school southern pastor the power of prophetic prayer <laughs> um, but explain to me, say if somebody gets on this video on youtube and they they are no idea what prophetic prayer is I know what it is. You know what it is. Explain to somebody that's not Christian. What is prophetic prayer? Okay. Well, let's start with the first part of it, which is prophecy, right? Because mm -hmm. in order to understand prophetic prayer, you have to know what the prophetic is. That's, that's right. That's somewhat of an idea of what prayer is. But when we talk about prophetic prayer, and mind you, I didn't say pathetic prayer. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Very important to make the distinction. We're talking about prophetic prayer. Too many people pray pathetic prayers. Come on. And uh, prophetic prayer is really, when you look at the prophetic, the word prophecy or to prophesy, you know, in the Old Testament, a common word is the word Navi in Hebrew, which is often pronounced Nabi, but it's actually Navi. And it's, it, it means to swell or to bubble up. It deals with, the Old Testament prophets, they were under divine inspiration. And when the Holy Spirit would move upon them, they would receive an inspired word from God. The very simple definition of prophecy is to give or to release an inspired word. 
uh, from God. And so this word could be a foretelling of future events like a judgment, the destruction of the temple, the captivity of, of the Israelites in, in the book of Jeremiah to the Babylonians, the Persian captivity. It could be, hey man, a tree is about to fall on your head. <laughs> uh, it was a foretelling of future events. Uh, and that's the common definition. So it was to give this divinely inspired message that would, that would affect things within the temporal reality. In other words, things in time. So something came from eternity and it invaded time to the extent that time or the natural course of history was affected. This is why the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, through faith we understand that the world were framed mm -hmm. by the word of God, the rhema word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So all of the prophetic utterance throughout the cosmos, throughout the ages, the aeons, were crafted by these prophetic words. I mean, it's really powerful it is. when you think about it. Um, but in the New Testament, we have an even slightly more cooler dynamic in that when we talk about uh, the prophetic, the Greek word prophero, it means to bring forth something. So it's, it's a birthing, a releasing of something. Um, the, three, the three common expressions of the prophetic are exhortation, edification, comfort, where, where someone is exhorted by the message, someone is edified by the message, they're comforted by the message. I, I like Strong's definition because one who under divine inspiration brings forth an utterance or, or communicates the mind, the will, the purposes of God. So when we talk about prophetic prayer, we're talking about a divinely inspired utterance in prayer or to proclaim something or to release something or foretelling. You know, the Bible talks about foretelling. It's not just foretelling. In other words, in 2 o'clock on, on, on uh, February 18th, you're going to eat a banana. <laughs> That's foretelling. But foretelling is something that comes from the Spirit of God, from the mind of God, that brings uh, a change or a transformation or a shift to someone's life. And so because we have the Holy Spirit living within us, every believer has what I call a prophetic DNA. Amen. In other words, we have the capacity to call forth those things that be not as though they were. We have the capacity to speak life. We have the, the capacity to make prophetic declaration. Job twenty two twenty eight 28 says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And, and uh, God's light will lighten upon your ways. And so basically, when we're praying now, this is a different paradigm in prayer. It's not just supplication or asking God, Lord, what is your will? There is a place for that. Mm -hmm. Lord, will concerning my finances? What is your will concerning my marriage? And most times we can go to the Bible mm -hmm. to find out the express will of God. But there's certain things like who am I supposed to marry? Uh, where should my children go to school? These are things that are not, you can't go to John chapter 4 verse 13 and it says Duke University in the scripture. So <laughs> you need insight, you need wisdom, you need mm -hmm. But there's another dimension in prayer which is not supplication. It's not um, just asking or interceding, but it, it is prophetic in nature in that it is setting the natural realm in order according to the spiritual realm or according to that which is eternal. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because when God saw chaos in Genesis chapter 1, mm -hmm. Tohu and Bohu in the Hebrew, darkness and void, right, mm -hmm. formlessness, mm -hmm. the Bible says God cried. Mm -hmm. No. No, it did not God, say that. I begged and no, begged. it did not say that. It says God said, let he there spoke. be light. And there was light. He That's right. spoke into the darkness. That's right. And the light came forth. In, in fact, in the Hebrew, it's the expression light be or light in me be because there was nothing external 
that was available to address the darkness. Mm -hmm. God had to pull from within himself because he is the self-existent one. Mm -hmm. Which means that if you're going through hell and high water, if there's darkness all around you, Come on. chaos and confusion in your life, you don't need to pull from external. Come on. You pull from the Holy Spirit. Come on. In, and you say, light be. Amen. Speak that light, it dispels the darkness. Amen. That's what we call prophetic praying. Amen. Not prophetic praying. It means that you have the power through the Holy Spirit. You're not self Amen. You have power through the Holy Spirit to bring change and transformation to the circumstances, situations Come on now. that you face Come around. On. And when the church learns to do this, I believe we can literally reshape our world. Yep. That's what God did. He reshaped yep. the world yep. through the word of God. And yep. so we have the power to change our world. I tell people, if you don't like the world you live in, change it. Come on. Change it. You have the power to change. And that's what we call prophetic prayer. Yep. And it's too long. It's been for too long. The church has been these defeated. Come on. Woe is me. Yep. You know, the devil's on my tail type people. It's time that we rise up and speak what God has already defeated and say, <laughs> we're going to fulfill what God has called us to fulfill. Now and talking. it is just, it is really, you want to shake people sometimes. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. God died for your healing. He died for your victory. So go get it. That's right. You know, that's right. As we close out, could you pray prophetically pray? Just what you feel is on your heart. What God, just release it. You never know who's going to watch this video. Just release and what's you on your heart. What? I'm going to pray, but let me say this real quick. Sure. I really want to emphasize this whole prophetic DNA piece because it was revolutionary for me. And I'm going to pray in just a moment. Sure. You know, our DNA is the codex that determines all of our features, mm -hmm. all of our strengths, and even our weaknesses in the natural. Right. You know, things are hereditary. You receive things through genetic inheritance. Well, guess what? When you got born again, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man or woman is in Christ, Yeshua, he or she is a new creature, a new creation. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Come on life. now. And behold, all things are become new. And all things are, guess what? Of God, which means that we have received the genes from our daddy. In other words, we were regenerated and his divine codex was installed into our spirit man. So think about this. Before you look at circumstances and let circumstances rule you, you need to remember that the same one who put the stars in space, the same one that brooded over the waters in creation, the same one who is ageless Amen. and eternal and, and self-existent and all-powerful and omnipotent and, and omniscient is the same one who dwells in you by the come Holy on God. now and therefore when you pray every time you pray change is going to transpire in your life father in jesus name i declare over every person watching that they are no longer victims but they are victors in the name of jesus i declare that the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead dwells in them and quickens them, makes them alive, rejuvenates and regenerates them in the name of Jesus. I declare that every sentence and edict of death is reversed in Jesus' name. I declare that what the devil meant for evil, God's already turned it around for your good. I declare that you come from behind to the front in Jesus' name. I declare you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath that the blessing of Abraham pursues you and overtakes you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. I declare that the rest of your days are the best of your days. And that situation that you're in, that, that evil report, that doctor's report, that report of the devil, we turn it around by the Spirit of God. Lord, I declare that this nation, America, experiences a great awakening. Come on. But we will no longer settle for the liberal the godless ideologies that have controlled this society. But Lord, we declare that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We declare that our babies will be born and not aborted. We declare that women will be liberated in Jesus' name. We declare that evil and violence and godlessness will cease 
not only in the life to come, but it's going to stop now because this is a nation whose God is the Lord. So we declare it, we mm -hmm. decree it, that, Lord, the next person that gets in office is going to fear your name. And if they don't fear your name, they're going to fear your Amen. name. In the name Thank of Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, we declare it, we yes. decree it, and we say it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And I want all of you to remember that God has awesome plans for your life. So get excited. Thanks for watching.